hey guys welcome back to the channel so as promised i wanted to dive in a little bit more on the nominee programs and this video i'll be talking about ontario and i will be looking at the international student stream particularly um and yeah just stay tuned to find out more so all right so let's get right into it i will be sharing a lot of screen grabs for you guys so that you can actually follow me as we go through the basis um of the basis of this um stream so like i mentioned in my previous video the overall um the overall thing is called provincial nominee program but specifically the one in ontario is called ontario immigration nominee program and there are a bunch of different streams. One such stream is the international student stream. There is also the graduate stream for the master's program students and also the PhD students. I'm gonna focus a little bit, not, not that I'm focusing on it, but I'm gonna be using the international student stream as the basis of our discussion today. So remember I said there's the express entry and the non-express entry route. I want to focus on the express entry route, but also tell you how you can actually go onto the province website and start your application from there. So like I said, I will be sharing screen um, recordings with you guys so you can see what I'm seeing. And if I'm looking down, I'm just making sure that the information that I'm providing is correct because I don't want to read everything out of my head. So the stream is called the employer job offer international student stream and what it allows is for persons well students that have a job offer to basically apply in the province to become a permanent resident so that's the overview of what the stream entails so like express entry like i mentioned on the previous video to be eligible for this you of course need to be eligible for express entry nonetheless and we know that express entry there is the rule of having um a job that's in tier zero one two and three with this provincial nominee program there's also specific um things that you get points for as well um with the job in terms of um, where the job is located or where you will be living, you'll also get points for how much pay you will be getting as well. So we'll take a closer look at that further on, but just want you guys to know that it's the same principle. The job offer has to be full time. It has to be in the tiers zero, one, two, or three. So that's the basis of it. To get started with this, you basically need to apply to express to express interest, if that makes sense. And I'll show you guys on the screen. So you should be seeing the screen as we talk. Basically, I'm going to be scrolling down um, and you will see register and expression of interest. So the expression of interest is basically you saying to the province, hey, this is my por this is my portfolio this is what i'm made up of please let me know if you would be interested in somebody with a profile like mine this this expression of interest is not to say that you are nominated but it's for them to nominate you that makes sense so essentially you need to go on and you need to register an expression of interest and that's where you will fill out your information all right, so now that you've figured out how to go on to register your expression of interest, we then need to go and look at the points. What do you get points for? And see how you guys can adjust um, based on your current situation. And let's say, for example, you're living somewhere that you don't get a lot of points, you can then move to somewhere that you'll get more points. So let's go through the points, points, why points. Um, so the first thing that we're going to take a look at is the labor market factors. So the first thing that I spoke about was the tier system, the NOC. You have to make sure that it's a 0, 1, 2, or 3 to get points. And if it's 0 or 1, you'll get 10 points. If it's 2 or 3, you'll get 8 points, I believe. Yes, and if it's 4 or 5, you don't get any points. So, you know, that's different. The second category that we will be looking at is the NOC board. 
and not gonna tell any lie but operate the occupational category i don't really know what they're talking about but i suggest that you guys take a look further into that to see what points you can get the other thing is now the big thing is the wage um previously when persons would do the canadian experience class we weren't worried about how much money we get paid we were just worried about getting a job that's in the right noc and once it was in the right noc we kind of said okay we're good to go but if you're interested in the provincial nominee program um, in ontario you will need to make sure that you have a certain pay if your pay is below 20 dollars, you don't get any points and yeah that sounds you know but anyways i'm gonna start from the lowest and go up so if you're making 20 to 24.99 it's five points 25 to 29.99 it's six points and so forth and so on once you're making over 40 dollars you'll get all 10 points next thing is your work permit or your study permit status when you're applying for this your study permit or your work permit has to be valid once it's valid you get 10 points automatically if you're out of status that's zero point how long you're in the job is also another factor if it's six months or more work in the job you get three points and if it's less than six months in the job you don't get any points unfortunately um and then the earning history so when we do taxes in canada you get a notice of assessment to say blah 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 essentially they're saying if you've made 40k in a year you will get points it's okay not to get points here because it's only three points i mean three can make or break the application but i wouldn't be too stressed if it was me the next thing is education as we know the phd the masters people will get the most points here but if you have a college um, diploma or a degree you will also get points the next thing is i'm a stem girl so automatically when i see stem i'm like great perfect and i want to pause here just to you know say a little bit a thing about this category where the pers some persons would get 12 points in stem or health but for person or trades and for persons with business they would get six points so half the amount of points so why i take a pause here because i think this is also very important is that when you're choosing to study in canada and you're choosing something to study don't just choose something random and the business business field in general is so overpopulated there's so much people and if you go on indeed and you see how much people apply for the jobs that you're applying for it's thousands of people in the business field and i know for some people in certain countries trades is looked down on and if you're not doing like a lawyer doctor and whatever it's not you know but in this case you can see trades is very important the stem field is very important health field is very important so if you're thinking about coming to canada to study my suggestion is focus on these three and focus on these programs that are stem related healthcare related um and anything trades related and the reason for that is you are also giving yourself the backup of being able to apply to the provincial nominee program and getting the 12 points versus six if that makes sense so sorry for the breakaway but i think it's very important the next thing is the canadian education persons that study in canada so if you're not on a work permit but you're a student you will also get points for that as well um and if you have more than one canadian credentials you get five points it, 10 points sorry and if you have one you get five points so that's better than none and the other thing so we have two more categories one is language i wanted to say two language but now i remember that recently they added another one so you can do ielts you can do CELPIP, and you can do the pearson test if you want to do if you're interested in doing english and you're an english speaker but if you're french you can also do the tef i don't remember 
but I don't remember the other one, but you do the French exams or the English exams and the higher your um, benchmark is, the better and the more points you will get. So essentially, um, and if you have two language, if you speak English and French, you get more points than somebody like me that only speak English. And then the other thing, which is key, so key, key to when you're choosing a program and when you're choosing where to live. And the reason for that is a provincial nominee program because they know certain places in Ontario is already populated. You get no points for living there because they're not contributing to the other communities. So if you are living in Northern Ontario, it's 10 points. If you're living outside of the GTA, except Northern Ontario, you will get eight points. And if you're living inside the GTA, so just Google to see where it would count as GTA, you'll get three points. And if you're in Toronto, these people are giving you no points. They're like, we're already stressing you guys out with the bills. Let me just stress you out a little bit more. <laughs> but yeah. It's very important where you decide to live and the address that you submit when you are submitting your application. So bear that in mind. Um, another key factor, and my cousin will benefit big time from this one, is where you study. If you study outside of certain areas, you will get more points. So once again, Northern Ontario 10, outside of the GTA 8, um inside the gta 3 and toronto none um and if your credential was completed without being in person they're saying zero on here however remember when covid happened and students were actually allowed to do online so take this one with a grain of salt there might be exceptions because as you know we're just coming out of a pandemic so those are the factors that you need to consider and they will consider as well when they are looking at your application. So now that you're done with the expression of interest, don't forget that there's an attestation form that you need to submit as well. And the good news about this backup plan is that it's free to express interest. If they don't give you a nomination or they don't ask you for your application or they don't ask you for your documents, no harm, no fall, right? So there's no money associated with registering your expression of interest. So please do it. Your expression of interest application is valid for 12 months. So within that 12 month period, if anything changes with your information, be sure to go onto the e-profile and update your information because updating your information may give you more points and it may help you to get nomination. All right, guys. So that's essentially how you start it. Once they give you a nomination, we can do that in another video. But I want to take this one a little bit slowly because I really, 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 really want international students to take this opportunity and try this program and something to note similar to the express entry this program is a little bit faster time turnaround so once you submit that expression of interest if they say yes here go ahead and apply you literally have 14 days to submit your application and you need to have your supporting documents so all the information that you provide on the profile that we discussed before that are contributing factors, you need to make sure that you have the paperwork to back it up. And you're not just saying, oh, I have this amount in English. Make sure that you do the English test before you submit that. And your English test is gonna be valid for two years. So you want to be very intentional about it. So once they, the expression is free because you don't have any guarantee, but once they say to you, okay, Go ahead and submit your application at that time. Chi ching ching. It's time for money, money, money. Um, and let's go through the fees so that you're prepared. International student stream, it's gonna be 1,500 Canadian dollars. I know guys, everything is money with this thing, but you know, we all want a better life and 
that's essentially why we do it. So the provincial nominee program is gonna cost um, $1,500 for the application. So this is just the start of it. And once you submit that application, cause they think they're, they're interested in you, then if you're nominated, then you'll be awarded that extra 600 points. And that's essentially why we are doing this entire process anyways. All right, guys, so that's basically the Ontario um, Immigration Nominee Program, specifically the International Student Stream. And I know this is a lot to absorb, and so that's why I'm taking my time. But I just want to say again, because of the numbers, the, the Provincial Nominee Program numbers are more than the express entry which means they want particular people with those points from the um, scoring factors that we saw. So be sure to put in an expression of interest. If it doesn't fly, then at least you know that was your backup and you still have a second option. And if this, this one goes through, you get 600 points and there's almost a guarantee that you will get an invitation to apply for permanent residency and you can kind of get your life settled and on track a little bit faster. So guys, until next time, toodles.